how to create a powerful search bar in Excel to filter a large data set. So let's say I can combine here multiple criteria to filter my data set. So as the month, I want to filter from the data set everything that is equal to February. As the item, I can skip this option. But as the region, I want to couple this option with the February month. And as the region, I want to use West, for example. Enter. Now I'm going to click here to filter the data in the search uh, icon. As you can see, now the data is filtered. And uh, as the criteria, I have only everything that is equal to the month February and also equal to the region West. So I just basically match both of those criteria. I can also click here in the red icon to read it off all the filters to clear my data set. And as you can see, now I have my entire data set with all the rows and also the filters, the, the search bar is empty. So let's take a look on how can we create this powerful search bar in Excel using basically two different tools. The first one is the developer tab that we're going to see how can we enable this option. And the second tool that we're going to use is within the data tab, we have the advanced filter in Excel. So basically, we're going to use both of those functionalities, tools in Excel. Let's start with enable the developer tab. And to enable the developer tab in Excel, you can go, for example, to the home tab. And within any blank space, you can right click and then go to customize the ribbon. Because within this new window, you're going to have, you need to, to choose instead of popular commands, main tabs, for example. And then you can go to developer, click add and click OK. That's it. Now you have the developer tab in our Excel. Within the developer tab, we're going to use record macro. And we can also use macros to see the list of the macros that we did. But before we create an automation in Excel, this is what uh, we're going to use the developer tab for. Let's input some new blank rows in Excel because uh, basically we're going to input new blank rows above our data set because that way we're going to be able to create a search bar. So let me click in the first row that I have, the, the, the row number one, and then right click. I can go to insert. I can do it one more time and one more time. That way I'm going to have three new blank rows. And here is very important. You need to think with yourself. What are the informations that I want to use as criteria to filter my data set? You can use basically any different information that we, you have within the data. As I have here a sales report with information such as the order ID, the date, the month, the brand, and on and on and on, I can use basically any of those different columns to be my, to be used as my criteria, to be used as the filter. But if you have, if you have a different data set that I'm using here, of course, you're going to need to use different columns. But anyways, let's say I want to use first the month. I can take the first row and the second one, and then I can right click on this selection. I can go to cope and within the first cell, right click, and then I can paste this option. That way, I basically, I already created here the search bar. It's very important. You can also do it manually. Input, let's say, brand. And uh, in the cell underneath, you can input uh, the criteria or the thing that you want to filter. But it, you need to be mindful here because the header needs to match with the headers that you have within your data set. Okay, so pay attention to this detail. So this is why I'm copying and pasting because it's easier, okay? As a product, I want to use it to as the filter too. So Ctrl C, Ctrl V, or right click, copy and paste. And I also want to take the region, select both of the rows, the first two rows, scope. And now I go to the cell E1, right click and paste. Of course, I'm separating the third boxes, but uh, if you want, you can append all those one by another okay let me read it off the, the values that i have within the search bar you can also change the design of the search bar maybe we can select the background and change the color to a yellow one or a yellowish color like this yeah i think it's a good idea now to create the icons that we're going to use to filter the data set we can input here maybe a uh, magnifier, a green one, and a red one to read off the information. But if you don't have access to the icons in Excel that you can find within the Insert tab and then Icons, let's say for some reason you can't access the icons in your Excel, you can simply create some buttons. And I'm going to show you how can you do it. 
let me go to interface because within these options i have the both icons that i'm going to use this one right here and also this one right here i'm going to click insert and of course you can choose any different icon that you want to use let me bring it up because both are selected i can go to graphic format and decrease those values right here to make it smaller okay now i can go to graph format again select maybe graphics outline select a red color and also in the weight i can change to two and one quarter okay now with the minus one the negative one i can change the background color to a red one and uh, the one with the plus sign i can change the background to a greenish one and also the outline to a greenish color okay so now i have both of the icons that i'm going to use so let's say and or as i said before you don't have access to the icons in excel you can go to insert and then shapes here you can choose any of different shapes that you can choose so maybe you can use some rectangles click hold and drag to make the the area of the rectangle once you to select inside the rectangle and here you can input any text that you want to use such as cert for example and then you can go to shape format choose a different layout and go to the home tab align the middle and, and in the center increase the font size put everything in bold and yeah, that's it so you can also create a button in excel without need to use any set of icons but i'm gonna stick with the icons okay but if you don't have access to the icons you can do what i just did here with the buttons with the shapes now it's time to use the, the the developer tab in excel to automate the filters because basically we're gonna use the data tab the advanced filter in excel if you click here as you can see we have a lot of options to fill in the advanced filter but it's going to be very easy to use them within the developer tab when we are creating the automation so let me close this the first step that i'm going to need to do just before using the developer tab is click within the data set and then transform this data set into a table in excel insert and then table why is it important to transform my data set into a table in excel because whenever you update your data set, input new data, input new rows, new columns, all those chains is going to be automatically updated within the range, within the range of the table. If you do not select the table in Excel, the range is not going to be automatically updated for you. And this is a problem because if, let's say currently, you have 100 rows into your data set, tomorrow or in the next day, you're going to have 200 rows. So you basically double the size of your table or of your data set those new rows are not going to be included in the range when we are using the filter in excel but if we are using the a table in excel all those new rows are going to be automatically included in the new range within the filter option okay so this is why it's very important to use a table in excel instead of just using some data set okay without using a table itself the tool uh, so go to insert table and then it's very important too. My table has headers, yes. And then click OK. Now we have a table in Excel. Something that you can also do is go to the table design and here select a different style to your table. I'm going to stick with the first option, none, because I don't want to change the layout and the design of my table in Excel. OK, now we can go straight to the developer tab. No, no more talk. Let's click uh, record macro. And within this new window, you can give your macro a name. Maybe it's a good idea to input the name. Uh, as search just to remember that uh, this macro is going to search for the filters that we we want to use and then you can also input a shortcut key and also a description but i'm going to skip those options i'm going to click ok now whenever we click in anything in excel whenever you we use a tool type in something or do whatever you do in excel it's going to be saved started within the macro the first thing that i want to do is i want to click in the cell a4 a4 okay so in this cell right here why because in this cell is where i have the first cell that corresponding to my data set my table in excel okay so click in this first cell then you can go to data and uh, then advanced within this new window as you can see now the list range i already select the entire table and this is very important this is why it's important to use a table in excel because the range as uh, I said before, if you input new rows in the table, this range right here is going to automatically be 
update for you. Okay, so this is very important. This is why it's important to use a table in Excel. Now is the criteria range. Let me scroll the sheet up and then I can go to criteria range, click in the up arrow and select basically everything. The first row and the second one, click, hold and drag to the side like this. As you can see, I select the selection that I did inc is including the month and the, the row underneath it, the product and then the row underneath it, the region and the row underneath it. Now I can click in the down arrow and then click OK. That's it. As you can see, nothing changed here because there is no, no information within the filters, but it is, this is not a problem. And again, click in the cell A4. That's it. Click in the developer tab and then stop recording. Okay, now our macro is already done. If you go to the developer tab and then click in macros, you can see the macro that we just did. Let me close this panel and then let's say I want to filter everything that is equal to March. And uh, within the March month, I want to filter the products that uh, starts with PR maybe. Okay, just PR. Enter. As PR, I have pre-workout and also protein powder. So maybe we can go, we can have those two informations. Now let's go to the developer tab and then macros. Click in the search. That is the macro that we did. And then click run. Let's see what's going to happen. Yeah, so it's working. As you can see, because we input it here as the criteria, the March month, and also the PR, that is just a, a fraction of a word, we have as the filter everything that I has PR within the column, and also everything that is stands for the March month. Now I think it's a good idea to read it off the filters that we did, or in other words, create the automation to do so. And we can read it off the criteria and also read it off the filter that is within the data set and restore our data set to the original version, let's say. So let me click again in the developer tab and then record macro. This macro I can give the name clear and then click OK. This time let's start with selecting the second row and then press the delete button. Just hit this, tab, this button to read it off the information. Now again, I go to the cell A4 and then go to data, advanced. Uh, the list range is already selected and also the criteria range is already done. But I think just to make sure, let's do it again in the criteria range. So click in the upper arrow, select the month, the product, the region, and the row underneath it. Click in the down arrow and then click OK. So yeah, it's loading. As you can see now, we basically restore uh, the data set. Click again in the cell A4 and then go to the developer, stop recording. And yeah, that's it. We're done. But uh, now how can we append those macros to the corresponding icons or to the buttons that you have in Excel? Let me right click within the first icon, right click, and then you can go to assign macro because here you can find the macros that you did. Uh, the first icon that I have is about to sort and then I'm going to click OK. The second one, right click. I can go to assign macro again. This one is going to clear the data. OK, yeah, that's it. So let's make sure it's working. I want you to sort for everything that is equal to uh, maybe January. As the product, I want to have uh, vitamin C. And as the region, I can have north. Let's see if it's going to work. Let me click here in this plus sign. And yeah, as you can see, the data is it was filtered for me just with the information that I coupled here within the criteria of the filter. So this is how we can create a powerful search bar in Excel with the filters. And if I click here to clear the data, let's see what's going to happen. It's loading. And yeah, that's it. We have the data as it was before the filters. Even though we're done with the automation, it's very important to properly save the macro that we did. As you can see here, my Excel file has a different extension, .xlsm, and the M stands for macro in Excel. And you need to do the same. So click in the file, and then you can go to save as. Within this option, you can go to browse, and that way you're going to open a new window to save the Excel file in anywhere within your computer. It doesn't matter. You can choose any place to save your spreadsheet. But it's very important to use save as type Excel macro enabled workbook. Click in this option. And as you can see, the first option that I have, Excel workbook, is basically the standard one. And you can choose the second one, Excel macro enabled workbook. That's it. Simple as that. Just click in the second option. 
and the name file name you can give the name that you like the most doesn't matter and then you can click save that's it this is how you can save an excel file properly whenever you have a macro an automation okay i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you have any questions or any suggestions to the next videos let me know comment down below and i see you tomorrow as every day has a new video i see you there